Hey there, it's Jim from Janku, and today I want to take a look at creating an animation in Synfig Studio. So recently on our channel, we did a time-lapse video of creating a website mock-up in GIMP. It looks a little something like this. And I've actually gone through and I've started building out the website using Plenty, which is a static site generator we're creating. So this is over here on our local host, but as you scroll down, you'll notice that this section here is a little sparse. So we actually want to make this a little bit more interesting. So I'm going to create an animation over here on the left-hand side, which is just going to be a computer that is typing some text on a page. Now I've actually gone through and I've created a mock-up for this with pen and paper. So that's what you're seeing on the screen right now. And I'm going to go over here into Inkscape and I'm going to create an SVG version of the same image. And once we have that set, we'll export this over into Synfig and we'll use that to animate some of the little word bubbles. So let's just hop right in and get started with this. Since this isn't an Inkscape tutorial, I went ahead and just drew this graphic out. Now, if people are interested in how to draw a computer graphic like this, just let me know in the comments and we'll do an Inkscape tutorial on how to do this. But let's just go ahead and take a look at this object real quick. So we have this object here and I've actually gone ahead and I've tried to import this into Inkscape. One thing you'll notice if I just scale this down so you can see it, is it's missing a couple aspects on this image, right? So we're missing the little square box up here that represents the image on the screen, and then we're missing the bottom border down here, which gives some 3D depth to the laptop computer. Now, the reason why that's happening is over here, we have these as rectangle objects. So if I were to look at my pass by node tool, you can see that this is still a square. So you have like the rounded edges options. Now I wanna just reset that back but you don't have individual node points on each one of these. So what you could do is you could come up here to path and object to path, and you'll convert that from a rectangle object to a path that you can manipulate like this by moving the nodes. So the same thing has to happen down here for this. So this is still a rectangle object. So let's just go up to path, object to path, and now those are nodes as well. So with that set, we can come up here and we can export this entire image to a synfig related format. So let's go to file, Go to save as, and then I'm just going to save over this computer to SIF here. So make sure your file is a .sif extension. So you can choose that from your options here. So that's a synfig animation extension. And then save this to your desktop. I'm replacing my file here. And then I'm gonna come up, I'm gonna open up synfig. And over here, I'll just get rid of this object. So I can actually come over and delete the layer. And then I'll go to File, Import, and I'm gonna grab the new computer2.sif file that I exported from Inkscape. I'm gonna import that. Hmm. So interesting enough is I actually had to close out of Synfig here to get this to work. So let me just demonstrate doing that. So when I imported the new file, it was still missing certain sections here. So I went and I just closed out of Synfig Close without saving. Then I went up here and I opened up Synfig Studio one more time. And then I just re-imported that file. So I went to File, Import, and I chose Computer2.sif one more time and imported. This time I had that rectangle here and if I actually come and I scale this down, I have that bottom rectangle here as well. Now, I covered this in previous videos, but one thing you'll notice if you actually try to manipulate these paths, so for instance, let's open this up. I'm going to just force this to quit. It seems like it's frozen on us right now, so I'm just going to quit out of that. Let's try this one more time. Open up Simfig Studio 1.2.1. Let's import our computer file. And what I'm trying to demonstrate over here is if you edit one of these paths, so for instance, this here, and it says the value I'm trying to edit is a composition and it doesn't allow us to change it. So the way we can get around this is we can actually copy all these individual paths here and we'll move these over to a new file. So I select this first path in my layer and then I scroll all the way to the bottom, hold shift and click the last one so I can select all these paths. Try that again. Okay, so now I have all of them selected. I'm gonna control C to copy that. And then I'm going to open up a new synfig file so you can see that we have this new animation two over here. And then I'm just going to do control V to paste this in here. And all these individual paths get pasted over here. Now I can still group these together if I wanted to. So I can right click and I could say group layer. 
And so I created a group. And what I can do with that now is I can still scale and position this as a complete group here. So I can grab this and I can scale this down a little bit. And now we have an object where we can actually manipulate those individual paths and we can actually scale and move this around as a group. So let's close out of this last synfig file. We don't need this anymore. Close without saving. And then let's just save this. We're going to save it as comp animation. We're just going to save it to the desktop. OK, now we can get started manipulating some of this stuff. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit. Now the animation I want to create is I want to make it look like we're typing on here. So I want to have these lines kind of grow and just have them grow sporadically so it looks like there's movement in these words here. Maybe I'll even do something with this image like shake it or expand it. I'm not quite sure if I want to do something like that. So step one is let's come over here to our keyframes. So I'm going to come out here about 12 frames and then I'm just going to add a new keyframe. I'm going to select this and I'm going to press the little animate guy. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to scale this down all the way over here. So this is actually the curve of the line here. This is the waypoint. But I actually want everything to be right over here at the end. So I'm going to put everything on top of each other like a little dot here. I'm actually going to have to pull this in as well. So there we go. So this will just be a little blue dot underneath these waypoints here. And then let's come up here and let's jump to maybe 24 frames. And let's add another keyframe by pressing this plus icon here. And then let's select this. And let's bring this back out all the way. Whoops. Let's bring it all the way back out to about where it was here. And let's put this back on top of it like that. And so let's just animate this and show what this looks like. I'm going to turn off the animation real quick. I'm going to come back here to the beginning and let's press the play. So you can see it kind of shrinks in and then grows out. Play that again one more time. Uh, let's bring this back, play head all the way back to the beginning, play it. So it kind of shrinks and grows. So that's basically the idea of what we want to do. So maybe we want to do one here, maybe we want to do one here. Hmm. Maybe we'll do one in each line. We'll do a, a grow, 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 grow. So let's set another keyframe about 12 frames out from here. Let's add a keyframe there. Let's select that and let's press animate again. And now let's come over here and let's make sure we have a new layer selected. And over here, let's bring this all the way in. So again, we're going to move this, put the waypoint back in on top of where it was. Okay. And then let's come out here to 48 frames, add a keyframe, select that keyframe, and let's pull this back out to its original length. Something like that. Okay. Let's come back out another 12 frames. Let's select something like this. Let's move it all the way in. Again, you might grab the waypoint at first, stack everything on top. Okay, that looks good. Come out another 12 frames, add a keyframe. Oh, did we forget to add a keyframe there? We'll see. And then scroll back down, select that new frame. Let's bring this all the way back out. Something like that should do. Go out another 12. Add keyframe. Make sure our keyframe is selected. Come over here. We'll grab this. We're going to pull this one all the way in. And move the waypoint there. Stack it all up. 12 keyframes. Add, select, and pull out. And let's just do one more over here. 12 keyframes. right about there, sorry. And we'll come in, we'll grab this. Let's uh, first come over here, let's add our keyframe, select, 
in stack it. Then let's come to the very end here. Let's add a final keyframe like that and select it. And let's just expand this out all the way to the edge. <clears throat> okay, I think that looks good. Now let's turn off our animation and let's come back here to the beginning of our timeline. It looks like we did miss a keyframe in here. So we'll have to come back and fix that. But let's just play this and see how this looks in general. So all the way back over here, turn on our animation. Let's fix this a little bit. I think this one is out a little farther than we actually wanted it to be. So let's fix that. And I think we have to come back and fix any of the curves we have in any of these things. So for instance, if we zoom in on that, let's save this first in case this crashes. Save. Now let's zoom in. Sometimes zooming in will cause things to crash. Make sure these things are really actually stacked on top of each other appropriately because I think that is giving us the little weird curves that we have in some of this stuff. So let's come back to this one as well. And then come back here and let's take a look at this. So again, make sure these things are really stacked on top of each other. Okay, that looks a little better. Come over here. So we have that there. Let's see what's going on here. This one's a little messy. So we want this to be right there and move this. Oops, there. And then that one right on top there. Hopefully that's a little closer. Okay, let's come back to this. Okay, so we have this one. It's a little bit of a mess. Again, move the actual anchor point on top and then the curvature dot afterwards because it will move relative to the first part. And then you can kind of just drag, just click and drag along the timeline if you wanna see exactly what that looks like. So it still has some kind of funky curve to it. So at the end here, Again, just make sure this is right on top of it. And that should fix most of our funkiness there. I think it does. And let's come back to this one here. Okay, and what do we got going on here? So let's move this guy right up on top and then grab its anchor there. That's pretty close. Okay, now let's try this. Let's zoom out, save, and let's try this one more time. So I think most of them are pretty good. This blue one's not very good yet. So what's going on with that one? So we start, expanded here, it shrinks, comes out, expanded all the way right here is where it ends. Let's see what's going on there. So I can already tell this little point here is a little off. So let's move this right over that. And let's just see here. That looks better, I think. So that has less of a curve to it now. I think this one over here looked a little bit like that as well. Let's see here. This one looked a little funky on the right. Yep, so it dips down here. So I think basically at this point is where it's not quite right. Yeah, okay, so we'll grab this. We'll center them. Let's see if that helps at all. Come back out. Let's play this here and press play. And at the end too, it's a little funny.
funky as well. So right, let's get it right here, right? So if we zoom in, you can see that this is a little bit funky. This should be right on top of it. And then this should be maybe up a little bit to make it straight. Is that right? It's hard when you're eyeballing these. You should try to be a little more precise than maybe I am. I try to do this kind of quick, but you can actually use actual measurements to, to do this a little more accurately if you'd want. Okay, that's pretty close, I think. So let's, let's zoom out. Take a look at this one more time. Yeah, even this one doesn't, huh? So here is okay. Zoom it dips down here, right? So what is it doing there? Must must be off at the end there. Because it tries to interpolate what's happening between these points. So if one of your endpoints is off, so you have to just kind of find where you've made the mistake. It looks like this one was off there. Oh, yeah. That looks better. So now if I were to come in, you can see it goes down and it should go back out all the way to the end here, assuming that we haven't messed that one up too much either. Okay. Well, I think we're getting pretty close with this. So you see that the, the lines that we draw at the end aren't exactly the same length, right? So the length we have here is different than the length we have here. So the red line gets a little too long and the white line is a little too long as well. So at the very end animation, I'm gonna shrink this white line down a little bit. Maybe to about there will be a little more close. And then where the red line is supposed to end. So where's, where's the red line get manipulated? Not this red line, this red line here. Okay, so that should be finished manipulating here. But you can see that it starts right about there. So when I finish it, it should be about there as well. So I'm gonna grab this and I'll just move this in. And again, make sure you fix these little lines. Okay. Zoom out, play it again. They all do kind of jump around a lot. Turn off the animation. So there's a couple things here I think we could do a little better. One is I don't really like that I'm sometimes extending these lines back out to a different length than they started at. So what we really should be doing is we should be duplicating the starting frame for that segment and then just adding it to a new keyframe afterwards so it goes back to the exact length. Another thing I think could be better is possibly adding a little bit of color blocks that are interchangeable here as this is scrolling around. So it looks like we're pressing keys on the keyboard as some of the text, you know, text in quotes, I guess, because it's just little line bubbles, but the text is changing on the screen and it kind of might work nice together to do something like that. So in order to do that, the easiest thing to do is actually to draw this out in Inkscape. So I'm gonna flip back over to Inkscape and let's take a look. This is our computer object here. And what I might do is I might start by grabbing something like this object. This might be a good representation of the key since it already has kind of the perspective that we're looking for. So I'm gonna copy this, I'm gonna paste it. And it has the exact shape. And then I'm going to, let's just change this to a random color for now. And let's get rid of the border. We don't really need a border. Borders are kind of challenging because as you scale objects, the border actually changes the line thickness. So if I were to scale this down, 
the border line thickness changes. So it's kind of a challenge to work with at time. So I'm actually going to come over here and I'm going to go fill in stroke and I'm going to go to stroke and get rid of that. And then let's come over here and let's just scale this in. Something like that might work pretty well. And then we may even want to rotate it. Uh, zoom way in for this. Hold down shift and scroll to, to go horizontal like that. Let's see here. Yeah, that's not great. So let's get rid of that. Let's start fresh. Let's come over here with a square. Let's draw something maybe like this. And I think what we want to do, let's first come up and do a path, object to path, and that will give us all the little nodes that we need to manipulate. And then let's hold down shift and click these two bottom nodes and let's just skew them a little bit that way. And then if I hold down shift as I'm dragging around, it'll stop some of that snap behavior that's being a little bit challenging at the moment. And then I'm gonna come and let's go back to our color and let's get rid of the border again. And for our fill, let's come up and let's just grab one of the colors from this previous section here. So I'm gonna grab that. And then let's come in here and I'm going to copy with a control C and then control V to paste it. And let's move another down here. And then let's grab a different color, maybe something like the blue. Then let's control C, control V, paste it. Let's come up here and let's go up to object and let's flip horizontal. We could do a shift H to do that as well. And let's kind of align this over here like this on the other side of the keyboard. So we're kind of thinking this is more like a split keyboard. And then maybe I actually want to come in, I might want to adjust some of these. So in the middle of the keyboard, I think the perspective would be a little bit different. This might be more of an angle than we want. So hold shift, click these two bottom nodes and move it in a little bit like that. Something like that might be okay. And then let's just come back up and let's select the color for this. This time we're going to do the red color. Maybe this one needs to be a little bit more even. Oops, hold down shift so I can put that back. And let me actually like where it was previously. Let's just come up here and change the nodes on this one again. Grab both of these and maybe just yank it out a little bit. Okay. Does that look okay? So we're getting there, although eh, it doesn't look great. Maybe this one could be in the middle, something like that. This one I feel like has to kind of get a little more skewed to it as well now that we're trying to make the keyboard look like it is at an angle. Oh, I accidentally grabbed the waypoint and control Z. Make sure I just, oops, control Z again. Let me zoom in here a little bit so I can see what's going on. Oops. Okay. Hmm, I think that was a little too much. So what I was doing is I was actually accidentally grabbing Maybe that's, maybe it was about right where I was. I was accidentally holding shift while I was grabbing that, which gives you this little arm here. We don't want that. So, okay. So now we're looking okay. Let's scroll over this way again. And let's grab this guy here. Let's copy, duplicate, come over here. Let's do, let's do an H to flip that horizontally. Don't press shift. And maybe this is just the white color. So let's just come up here and let's grab that. Maybe that looks okay. Let's add a few more buttons here. I'm gonna paste this again, move this up, let's skew the angle of these, hold shift, select both, let off shift, move it to the angle you want. Okay, let's grab the color. Let's make this one blue. And let's come back here Let's grab this one. I like the angle of this one for center keys. Control C, Control V, paste it. Again, move it to a position that makes sense. I'm gonna press H to flip it. So this is kind of the center of the keyboard. So this is where the split would be. And then let's come and let's just grab the yellow 
slash gold color there. Okay. So I think that's pretty good. So we're never gonna have all these keys showing up one time. They're gonna flicker in and out. So I think that is a good spread for those just kind of flipping around. So let's grab this object here and let's export this to Synfig. Again, I'm gonna just save this real quick. And then I'm gonna come and I'll do a save as. So I was actually saving it to computer two here. So this actually already has overwritten it. Let's just grab this computer two and let's save this as one more time. We'll replace it. And then let's come back to Simfig and let's do a new, and I'll create a new canvas here. And then let's come up import. And let's import that. Okay, great. So we're gonna have to do the same thing. Let's come into our layers here. Let's grab all our layers. Let's do a shift. Actually, let's click, scroll to the bottom, then hold shift, click select it all, control C, copy it, make one more new canvas. And let's paste it. That's with a control V. And then right click and just group layer here. And now select that and you'll get your little widget and just scale it down so it fits on your canvas. Something like that. Okay. Now we're kind of at square one again, but that's okay. Let's just come up here. Let's close out of this animation three. We don't need that. Close without saving. Animation four, let's save this as comp animation two. Save it to the desktop. Okay. So we're starting with this again. I think the number of frames we had here actually worked out. That was fine. We just went about it a little bit strange. So let's start again. We have this keyframe at the beginning. That's great. Let's go about 12 frames out here and let's add a new keyframe. You can see you can jump between these two keyframes by clicking the jump. So we're at the second one here. Click your little animate thing and then let's zoom in here. Let's do a couple things. First, let's grab this first part. Let's hide this. Hide this. Okay, and actually let's hide all of these and let's let's group these together. So I'm gonna I'm gonna click this top one for the keys. I'm going to click to the bottom with shift and then I'm gonna right click and group the layers. So I'm gonna group these into keys. Okay, my caps lock's on, that's okay. So, all right, so we have the keys. They're all hidden at this point, that's fine. And what we wanna do is at this very first point, we're gonna make this one this top one small. So let's zoom in here again, zoom up. Let's grab this again. We're gonna move this exactly on top of the last one. Let me just zoom in here to make sure we get it right this time. Okay, and let's grab this waypoint there, move it in. And this should look like a perfect circle by the time we're done with it. If it's skewed a little bit, odds are you're not zoomed in enough and these things are a little uh, out of place. Actually, I could probably zoom in more. You can see that the more you zoom in, the more exact of a calculation you can see here. So I can move this exactly over it now and then move this guy like that. Although that's, that looks worse. Interesting. Uh, I'm going to control Z, control Z. Well, that's kind of, that's kind of interesting. Let me zoom in here. It's about as far as let me go. Okay, so maybe I had the wrong, aha. Let's move that on top, move that on top, move that on top, and zoom out. Okay, I don't know, I guess the shape is a little weird. I think the program has trouble zooming in at that high of a resolution, but that looks about perfect as a circle. Again, I save my work pretty often when I'm using Synfig because it has been, known to crash on me. So uh, I'm just going to save it real quick. And then now what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump out another 24, another 12 keyframes here to 24. 
And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to this first one. I'm going to right click on it and I'm going to duplicate the keyframe. So now we have it exactly where it was at the beginning. Now, what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to go back to this one here. And let's jump to this keyframe. So this should be where it's a perfect circle. And in this keyframe, I'm going to come up and I'm going to press the key press here. So I'm hoping what the eye is going to see is a key press here, which then they'll perceive as the that is queuing off the line to grow up here. So let's just find that key. I'm going to come back down here. I'm going to find the exact key. I can't remember which one it is, to be honest. So let's see here. It looks like it's this bottom one. That makes sense. So it probably goes like this. Farthest left at the bottom, all the way up to the right, going right. Okay. So we have that key showing up there. The animate should be working there. So I'm going to turn off my animation real quick and let's just take a look at what this looks like. I'm going to zoom out and let's go back to the beginning. Let's play. Okay. So you might be wondering why is this not working? So these display settings are actually just for the layers themselves. So this is just an administrative thing, but it doesn't actually affect how the animation runs. So if we want to change these things so they hide and display, what you actually have to do is you have to change some of the parameters over here. So these parameters have a lot of different things for the object, one of those being amount. So this amount with a one value is saying show this object. We can change this to zero to say hide this object. So let's come back all the way to the start here and let's actually let's just turn on our little animator. Let's grab this object and let's turn the amounts for each one of these keys to zero to hide them initially. And again, so this is these are all going to be shown now in the left hand panel or layer. So I got the first one selected. Right click and I'm going to press zero. Enter. Well, it's a little. Oh no. Dang. Okay, so it crashed. Let's come back up here. Let's open it up one more time. And let's come and let's open recent. And that's our comp animation two. So we're over here again. So our keys are all hidden. Let's display all those one more time. And now we have this first object selected here. Let's come back to the amount. And let's press minus. Oops, that didn't seem to work very well. I'm going to backspace, backspace, zero. And then instead of pressing enter, I'm just going to click off it. So now we have zero. It actually says negative zero. It's probably because I went negative and that was the last value I chose. That's okay. And let's make sure our animate's on. Come to this next one. Do the same thing. Set this to zero. Click off it. Come to this one. Set this to zero. Click off it. Select it all, zero. Zero. And zero. Okay. Now let's go back to our keyframes. Let's jump to our next keyframe. And over here, since I had this animate on, this was probably the wrong thing to choose there because each one of these after that is going to have. Let's turn this off. Let's play this. Okay, you can see that they all kind of fade in. It's actually the opposite of what we wanted to have happen. That's my mistake. So let's come over here to our second keyframe. Let's go back to the properties of all these and let's actually adjust these. So the first one is the one that we actually want. I'm going to animate this. This is the only one that we want to have it as one. So I actually don't need to do that yet. I'll just maybe make this be the first key press. I'm going to come over here. Let's go to this one. Let's set this to zero. And let's set this to zero. Oh, 
Oops. Control Z, I did a little manipulation on that. I didn't want that. And zero, okay. Let's do that. And I'm just gonna turn off the animation for a second. Let's go back to the beginning and it'll look like this little blue key press happens. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna save this in case we crash. Let's go to the 24th frame here. Let's do the same thing again. Let's go to the first keyframe, which have no keys enabled. Let's duplicate it. Okay, and then let's play this. So this line should go into the 12th keyframe. The key should press, and then it should go back out to the 24th. So let's just start from the beginning, and let's play that. Okay, so that worked. So if you notice this, I'll just hold and I'll drag as you can see it. So as I drag forward, the little blue line starts going down, the key press starts coming in full, and then when the key press is full, it starts letting off and the blue line goes back out. Okay, so that looks good. And we're gonna continue doing that for the other lines as well. So let's come over here and let's do another 12 frames out. This time, maybe we'll grab something like this red line here. So let's do another keyframe. Let's come here, let's jump to this, and let's animate this. Let's just zoom in, let's grab this line here, zoom in some more, let's move this. Again, same as before, stack them, move the waypoint, and zoom in if you wanna be really accurate. So we'll put this on top of the last one, and we'll move this thing Exactly, and like that. Okay, so it looks like a perfect circle. That's great. Let's turn off the anime for a second. Save our work. Zoom out. And then let's do another 12 keyframes. Actually, at this point, let's make sure we add a key as well, right? So let's zoom back out come down, let's find our keys. Maybe we want this key to press now. So let's come back over here. Let's go to our, make sure our animate's on. Come to our mount here, and let's make this one. One, enter. So that blue key is now turned on. Eh, it's kind of funny that we chose two blue keys in a row. Maybe we actually don't want that one. Let's, let's turn this one to zero again. Let's grab a different key here, this key, and let's set this one to one, enter. So it's the white key. Okay, that's fine. And then let's come back out here, another 12 frames, and then let's go back to our keyframes. Let's go to the previous one here. Let's duplicate this. Okay, so it's duplicated there. So that should be the keys are all off again, and the line is back to its normal length. Turn off your animation. Let's zoom out a little bit and see what we're working with here. So I'm gonna just click and drag to see it in slow motion. So blue line goes in, key press, goes back out, red line goes in, white key press is a little hard to see, line goes back out. Maybe on this one, if you know what, right here, it'd be fun if we did two key presses at the same time. So let me just animate this again. Let's go back to that first object here and then let's Make sure we're on this exact spot. So again, jump to the frame that you want to manipulate, okay? And let's come back to this object. Let's go to our properties and let's set this at an amount of one as well. So let's set this to one, enter. Okay, and let's turn off our animation again. Now let's try this right here. So as we go from 24 up, two key presses at the same time and then they go out. Okay, that looks kind of cool. Save your work. Let's continue on, let's go out another 12, and then this time we can grab maybe this blue here. Turn on your animation. Well, actually, come over here, make sure you have a keyframe here, so come down here, add a new keyframe. Select that keyframe. Okay, let's zoom in. Let's pull this over. Stack it exactly on top of each other. 
Again, I'm going to zoom way in, get them as close to perfect as I can, move this arm in, stack that exactly on top as well. Again, you can get really specific if you want. That looks pretty close. Okay, that looks pretty close. So we have that, and then let's come back down. We need to get some keyboard presses, right? So let's come over here. Let's find our keys again. Which ones haven't we grabbed? So we probably could do this one here. So let's go to our properties, set the amount to one, press enter. And maybe we want a second one on this one as well. What other keys do we have here? Let's grab this one. I think this is the one we started with, but that's okay. Let's just grab this amount here. I think this is that yellow one. Press one. Oh, oh, it's the other blue one. That's the one. <laughs> of course, they're, they're right across from each other. It's convenient to do them both. I don't like the, the two blues though. It seems too much of the same thing. So I'm gonna come back here, set this to zero one more time. Maybe we just grab these two. That's fine that they're right next to each other. Set this to one. Oh, that might have been the last key that we pressed as well. That's okay. Okay, so let's see what this looks like if I drag it. So we have those, off, those, that's okay. Okay, that's our keyframe. All right, and then let's come back out and let's go another 12 and let's come back to this keyframe and let's do a right click, duplicate keyframe. So we're there. Okay, let's turn off animation. Let's see what's going on here. Okay. So let's come out another 12. And this time let's turn on our animation. Let's grab this red line here. Zoom in. Let's grab this. Move it over. Zoom way in. Move this directly on top. Grab this. Do the same thing. Okay, that looks pretty good. Zoom out. Let's do another key press. Which keys have them? There's some keys we haven't used up here. Let's be a little more creative, right? So we have this one. Is that the blue one that we're always hitting? That's the blue one, white. Who knows, maybe red. Let's grab this, no, that's the blue one. Okay, what's this guy? Let's grab this one. This might have been an interesting one to do for the last one, actually, now that I'm thinking of it. So let's come back over here. What do we have for a color here? So this is yellow. This, this is more interesting, I think. So let's grab this. Let's set this to one here. Oh, that's a Z death. Uh, uh, let's, let's, sorry. Control Z on that. That could be zero. Amount is what we want. Select that. Set that to one. Okay, the yellow is showing. Let's come back over here. This one can be set back to zero with this keyframe. Boom. Oh, are we not in the right spot? This looks like it's a little faded. I might have. Oh. So it goes all the way in here. Do you know what? That's okay. So this was this. We messed this up. So we did an interval a little too long. This is a full 24 to, to get from all the way down to a small line here back to a full line. So normally we do this a little differently. 
Now, that's probably okay. I can move this back in if I wanted to. Okay. Stop this for a second. Let's remove this keyframe. Okay, removed it. Let's come back over here. Let's do this and let's get our animation going. Let's duplicate this keyframe. Okay, so now we have that there. All right, so let's take a look at what we're doing again here. So we come from here, the blue line goes down. Oh no, our red line during this whole thing is now messed up. That's not what we wanted. So let's come back on here. Let's get this guy. Let's just remove this one again. Like we originally planned. Zero. And let's grab the one that we actually wanted, which is this one. Let's make it one. Okay. And I'm just going to turn off the animation for a second. Let's see what we got going on here. So blue goes down, keys come up. Okay. That looks pretty good. Now, unfortunately, what we've done is this red line. So we made that small for all these different animations. That's too bad. So what we want to do again is we want to bring it back up to its original length. So let's come back, let's zoom in here. So we want to apply this offset to the entire animation is what we're saying. <laughs> now I'm getting this thing kind of messed up here. Okay, here we go. So <laughs> let's get it back to where we kind of wanted it again. Yep, say yes. We're applying this to the whole animation. Okay, that looks pretty close. Let's zoom out, Let's see what we're working with here. Okay, so I'm gonna play this out. Let's make sure we have our entire thing here. Okay, so it goes in, button hit, okay, buttons hit. Good, buttons hit, good, okay. And then we're back, and now we're at where we need to be. Good, we've, we've settled all this. Let's come out 12, let's turn on our animation. Let's add a new keyframe. Let's select a keyframe, jump to it. And let's come in here, and now let's try to manipulate this red thing. So let's come in again, let's save this. We've fixed a lot of things so far, save. Control, scroll, zoom in. Now we can bring this down. And zoom. Control, I mean shift scroll to go sideways. Control scroll to zoom in. Regular scroll to go up and down. Okay, so we got a couple things going on here. We can fix this, yeah. Let's get these exactly on top of each other first. Then fix the little waypoints. Shift, scroll, scroll sideways. Move this on top. Okay, that's pretty good. Now control, scroll to come out. Okay, so that looks pretty good. And while we're doing that, let's also change these buttons. Scroll out. Let's go to our buttons, our keys. Let's grab this one, go to our parameters, our animation's still on, come to this, make this a one, the white's on, okay. And then maybe, let's get this one again, and we'll make this a one. 
one. Okay. And then let's do this. Let's go back to our keyframes. Let's come back out to nine, six frames. Come to this previous one. Control, click, duplicate the keyframe. Jump to it. Okay. Let's turn off our animation, see if we did that correctly. So let's scroll up a little bit, scroll out a little bit, and let's just click and drag. So the red line should go in, two buttons should light up, the button should go away, and the red line should go back out. Okay, we're getting really close. So now let's just do one more, uh, expanding one of these lines, maybe this white one or this yellow one. We'll do that 12 frames out from here, and then we'll finish that up going back to the default state right here at the end. So let's save our work. Let's come out 12 frames. Let's turn our anime on. Let's add a new keyframe. Make sure you have your new keyframe selected. Just jump to it. And then come in here and let's grab one of these items. Let's zoom in. Let's bring this all the way down. Zoom way in to get this accurate. And bring this arm in. Okay. And what we're gonna do is let's zoom back out. Let's do some more buttons on the keyboard. Maybe a combination we haven't done before, so probably something like this one. Go to our properties. Turn the amount to one. And maybe maybe this one. And let's turn the amount to one. Okay. Now let's go out to the very end frame here. Come back to our keyframes. Go to the one before this, control click, duplicate keyframe. And let's jump to it. And we should be good. Let's turn off our animation. And then let's just control click from 96 frames. So that goes down and then back out. So it looks pretty good. Let's go all the way to the beginning here. Let's play this. You know, that looks pretty good. And you know, overall it's decent. Um, there's probably a little bit better things we can do here and there. Um, and it actually looks like, uh, okay, yeah, it goes all the way to the end. Okay, perfect. So let's save this. And then let's just try to export this file. So let's go file, render, save this as an AVI file. I seem to have the best luck exporting those types of files and the rest of the settings I'll leave as they are for now. So this is a pretty small size, but for us that's okay. Let's just press render and see how we do here. Okay, so this is our file. Let's see if it came out. So the quality is not very good. You can tell that these lines have been kind of they look a little messed up, but the animation's generally working. The keys are pressing, the lines are going. So that's pretty good. Let's just work on getting our quality a little bit better. Just get out of here and let's do a better quality render. Let's come back to Synfig. So we should be able to come to File, Render. We can leave the same thing there if we want. So let's try a 10 or a 1920 by 1080 and let's come up to our quality and let's increase our quality to nine and then let's give that a render and see if that looks any better for us so we're gonna try this one more time Oop, it's not done rendering yet it's not very clear when it is rendering or when it's not rendering Hopefully that's given us enough time. Nope, doesn't seem to be working yet.
okay, so that's a much better quality image. That's great. So that's, that seems to be working. So now you can just play it through. The image is better quality. And we could convert this to something like a GIF, and I would probably just use FFmpeg on the command line to do something like that. And then you can embed that GIF into your website and use that on the web like that. Now, there's a couple things I'm not completely happy with. It looks like our object here got kind of truncated. So we had nice rounded edges when we were using this in Inkscape, and it looks like this got kind of cut off there. And I guess the same thing happened to our object down here. So you might want to fix something like that. Okay, so a couple things were annoying me about these little edges on these the square here. So you can kind of curve out the, the corner here, but you have to manipulate these waypoints, which makes the edges bow out. And I don't like that. I want these lines to be nice and straight, but I want this to be curved. So I figure these lines have nice rounded edges. So why don't I just compose a square of these individual lines, export that and put it into our file. So over here in Inkscape, I'm doing just that. So although this looks fine in Inkscape, what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab one of these lines, control C, copy, control V, paste, bring this up, put it in line there, and then make it equal this length here. Control C, control V, paste it, move this one to this section here. Control C, control V, bring this over here. You got the rotate now, and you can rotate it, hold down control, hold down control so you can get an exactly vertical line like that. Move this over here, resize it, click again to get the resize options, resize it like that. Control C, control V, move this over here like that. And then let's just, I'm going to shift click these top layers here and I'm going to move this over here so we can take a look at this in more detail. So hold down shift, scroll to move over to the side. And now let's scroll in here and see exactly what we're working with. So these things aren't exactly right. This needs to come up a little bit. It's hard to get that exactly right. The bottom one looks pretty good, actually. This top one's a little off, so I'm going to grab this again. I'm going to hold down Shift to kind of get it exactly how I want it. And it's close. Click again. Hold Shift and move it over just a smidge. If I can do it. Oh, that's not even. Click it. Hold down Shift. Okay, did I move that too much? Maybe a little bit. Click again. Click, hold shift, and micro adjust. Yeah. I think I'm just going back and forth on it. I think that looks pretty good though. So I can, you know, overall I can uh, grab this and I'm going to copy this. I'm going to put it in its own Inkscape file. So let's come up here and do file. New. We're going to control V to just paste it in here. So that looks pretty good. And let's just go file, document properties. And let's resize the page to the content. OK, that looks good. And then let's come in here and let's file, save this as a Synfig Animation Studio file. And I'm just going to call this square. I'll save that to my desktop. With that saved to my desktop, let's go back to Synfig and let's open up a new canvas and then let's go File, Import. Let's get our square. That's there. And then again, let's just grab our individual paths out of here so we can manipulate those if we need to. Hold down Shift, click all those, Control C to copy them. Let's go back to our good animation here. Let's hide this rectangle. We don't want that right there at the moment. And let's Control V, paste that in there. And then you can see all our paths for this. Let's group this. So I'm going to group layer. And we'll call this square. And then with this layer grouped, you'll get a little widget for manipulation. So if you grab the green part of it, you can actually move where it's positioned. So let's zoom out a little bit so we can see exactly what we're doing. So typically we have it overlapping on the top and the bottom, something like this. That's pretty close, although I don't think it's exact. So let's 
try to get this oops, let's try to get this option again and looks like I might have oh that's the square okay that's fine um, so let's grab our new square let's just move this what do we want to do move this down a little bit that went out a little that looks pretty good to me so that now has rounded edges that looks a lot better and what I did also is I came in here and I changed one of these key sequences. So I changed somewhere around here. So I, we only use the red key one time here at the end. So I actually just change it so we use it more times. So now it should just look a little bit more natural of just kind of random key presses. And I think that's good. I think that's good for now. You know, possibly could scale this square down a little bit. I'm gonna save this first. So let's just come in here. Let's select our square. And we'll grab this and let me just scale it down a wee little bit. Yeah, I think that looks better. I think it was taking up too much real estate before. That looks about right. So let's come up here and let's render this one last time. Let's go to render. We have our settings now, a big width and height. That's great. We'll call this animation three, save it to an AVI file, and let's just press render. Go to the desktop. This might take a couple seconds to actually finish rendering like last time. So if you try to open it too early, it's gonna give you an error, which I think we're gonna see in a second. Okay, that looks pretty good. I don't know, so we're seeing, there's a defect here I'm noticing. So this flashes at one of our keyframes. So let's just take a look at that real quick. Wait, no, nope, maybe not. Nope, it does. So right at the very beginning, that flashes. Let's just take a look at what's going on there. So. Somewhere out here. Huh. Now I'm not seeing it when I play it here. That leads me to believe it's a rendering defect. So what I might try to do is actually come up here and render it again. Again, make sure I'm saved. Render. Let's do this one more time to the same thing. Let's just override that file and see if we can get rid of that little defect. Okay, I'm gonna close out of this again. Let's go back, see if we can open up the new version of it. Okay, that looks better. I didn't see the defect that time, so let me try one more time. Okay, I think that's better. I think that's what we're looking for here. Let's go and try to export this as an actual GIF. So let's go render. Let's choose GIF. And let's try to render this to our desktop. Hmm. As I suspect, it looks like SimFig's having a little trouble rendering it this way. I might have my rendering properties not set correctly, but I have trouble rendering anything but AVI files from SimFig. So, it might be easiest to actually just take our existing AVI file we rendered and then use something like FFmpeg on the command line to convert that to a GIF. These things. Oh, well actually, look at over here. It looks like this ultimately did render. Let's see if Synfig's back to life. It is, okay. So, come over here. Let's take a look at what we got here. Do you know what? That's not bad. That actually works. 
We could have cropped this down a little bit more to get rid of some of the edges here. I thought it was okay to leave it like this because where I'm trying to put it, actually some extra space on the sides might be a good thing. But if you want to do that, let me just show you how I might go about doing that. Let's go back to Synfig and let's go to our canvas properties. So we have our width here. We can shrink this width down. Maybe we want that to be a half. Let's try to apply that. And we can shrink this a little bit more. Let's actually make this 1080. Oops. 1920 by 1080. We'll apply that. Say OK. And then we'll just scale way out from here. So that's actually scaling the whole image here. We actually want to crop this out. So made a couple adjustments by scaling and cropping things and then changing the size a little bit on the actual image. So this is what it looks like all said and done, put it on the page. I might go back at some point and adjust some of these things. Like I might change some of the colors. This looks a little hard to see unless you're really focusing on the image. Although sometimes being subtle is good. I might just darken the edge here and maybe the back line, outline of this here. And then maybe I might even add some more of the branding of the actual plenty here. So maybe something like adding the plenty planarian in here as well, instead of just a generic box here to make it more of a branded GIF. Hopefully this video was helpful for you learning how to animate a GIF using Synfig Studio. If this video was helpful for you, please subscribe to our channel and give this video a like so other people know to watch it. And until next time, we'll see you later. Take care.